one day, the earth moved. It wasn't meant to, but it did. It distinctly moved. I was working with my staff in the staff room on the last day before we started the new school year, and the earth moved. The problem, I found out, was not the floor underneath me or the walls around me, but the fact that there was a classroom on the back of a truck moving slowly past the staff room windows, which gave me the feeling that the earth was moving. That classroom was needed for children the next day. And so that was part of my leadership journey and the leadership storms that went towards my whole leadership story. The story is one of an ordinary man who, with a leadership journey, created an extraordinary school. The journey had begun two years hence when we had moved 500 kilometres to a new town to my first full principalship. Unbeknown to me and a whole lot of other people, New Zealand was in the grip of a reduction in child age population. That was the consequence of World War II and the subsequent baby booms, which became smaller and smaller and smaller, until schools in my town were finding they were losing role or losing students quite steadily. Seats were becoming empty in schools. Staffing was dropping, money was reducing, and many of the schools were entering into a cycle of decay and misery as the roles kept dropping. The Ministry of Education's solution to this was to have a review where the principals and the community were put in charge of their own destiny. This gave us the opportunity to say which schools would survive, which would merge, and which would disappear. Or, in personal terms, was I going to have a job or was I going to be out of a job? Anyway, the journey continued so that I was eventually appointed principal of a merged school. Two schools were coming together to form a whole new school. A challenge. Oh, what a challenge and what a leadership storm. From the time of announcement of my appointment, I had three months. Three months to create a new school with a new curriculum, new procedures, a new uniform, new stationery, new everything. In that time, I also had to continue running a school, close that school at the end of the year, and physically shift the buildings of that school onto a new site. The other storm that came with that as well was that this was to happen over Christmas. Christmas in New Zealand is a wonderful time. The whole country closes down. You cannot get tradesmen. You cannot get people to do things. And you cannot have classrooms on the road over the holiday period. So it was not until the last two weeks of January that buildings were being transported one and a half kilometres across town onto a new site. And that was what disconcerted me that day when I saw the last classroom moving past the staff room on its way to be put down. That afternoon... At four o'clock, we formed a human chain. All the teachers and staff on site moved desks, chairs, furniture and books into the new classroom that had just been set down. 
8 o'clock, next day, in walked 275 cheerful souls to their new school. We had done it, but only just, and oh boy, were there storms along the way. Not so stormful, but that is the joyful picture of the, of the town that uh, this uh, journey happened in. And the new school that came now looks something like that. That part of the leadership journey and storms was over and now started the next part. That was enriched thoroughly by joining up with our network and putting in place a shared vision and a plan that was to set our new school, Douglas Park School, on its way to becoming a magnificent school. Over those years of leadership and the storms that have happened, there's been much that I have learnt, there has been much that has been moved through the school, and there has been much that has been shared with the community. Some of the things that I have learnt from that I'll share with you tonight. The key is leadership. Leadership is the power to create so much magnificence through other people. But for me, it was a very special event because I had picked up principalship when I had actually lived more of my days than I had yet to live. So I was moving towards the end of a teaching career. And for me, I wanted this to be a magnificent event. And I was determined that I was never, ever going to die wondering whether I could create a magnificent school or not. So time was of the essence. The other big lesson I learned along the way was courage. The ability to stand up with, for full frontal leadership, to be brave, and to lead others through courageous times. As a leader, and particularly as a school leader, it's not always an easy thing to do. But leaders have to stand up and they have to sometimes fight back against the forces of ignorance that are wanting you to move in other directions. And just to have the sheer internal courage to say, this is a direction that we're going to go down. Flattening the authority gradient was probably one of the most critical moves that I made. To do that, I shared my power. I gave away as much power as I possibly could. I grew my teachers as leaders. I took my young beginning teachers and gave them the skills to become leaders. I took my teachers, all teachers, and taught them about being leaders in their classroom. Actually standing up and not just working with the pedagogy on a day-to-day -day basis, but being the leaders in the classroom and taking their children and teaching them to be leaders so that the schools and the class was operating at a high level of autonomy. There was a very clever thing that I was doing in sharing this leadership. I am but one head. When I work with my team, I'm working with many heads and many different ideas, and collectively, Many ideas are always going to be much better than just one. The other important issue in that for me was that if I have people around me who are leaders, they will check my mistakes. So I gave them the power to call me, to speak out and to speak up. If they thought what I was saying, what I was doing, what I was looking to act upon was not going to work. Taking that step took a lot of courage from me within to set aside a lot of the traditional notions that I had of leadership. Communication. Talking with people, communicating is the lifeblood of every organisation. 
Without it, organizations will wither and die. So communication at a broad level, communication at a personal level, communication at an individual level, communicating so that I opened up everything that I was thinking of and doing and sharing with my staff, my children, and my community was absolutely imperative. It brought everybody on board and gave them the sense of ownership that was needed to create a magnificent school. Leadership also operates at many different levels. And as a leader, I had the opportunity to choose to be strategic where I worked with vision, where I worked with the mental models, the values, beliefs, and assumptions of my people, and working with the systems that made the school tick. Or I could spend a good deal of time in management. Schools are wonderful places because there's so much everyday stuff that just happens, but constitutes management and does not really move a school forward in a definite direction. And one of the other major things that I learned, painfully sometimes, was to slow down the process of change so that I kept the team together and everybody was working with me and working with each other and that we were not leaving people behind. Less is actually more, as over time, everything becomes embedded, bone deep and enduring. Instituting pride values has been a major tool in attracting students to Douglas Park School. The P in pride stands for peace. The R is respect. The I is independence. The D for dare to dream. And the E for excellence. These are our core values that we talk with our kids about every day. We teach them to our kids. The kids are part of a pride team that determine what values we're going to work with, what needs to be taught to the rest of the school. And the kids themselves demonstrate these values to the school at our public times. You will notice that the I in pride is green. Because as well as all the great ideas that we were implementing, there needs to be a touch of humanity. There needs to be a touch of realness about the place. There needs to be a touch that people can reach out and grasp. And here she is. Billy Kershaw, the school Labrador. Billy comes to school every day with Anne, her mum. Anne is the office manager, but Billy is our school dog. In this shot, she's wearing a green t-shirt, which meant that at that particular staff meeting, she was working with the green team that were doing work around implementing independence within the school. Billy has been with us for eight years. She has not yet passed grade one. She has failed all the reading and numeracy tests, but she has touched the heart of so many kids. She has been a special creature in the lives of our special needs children, and the end of her soft, furry nose, ears, has tickled the noses of so many children and given them comfort and strength to get through that little incident they're having in the day. Billy Kershaw. But getting to the end of my journey and the storms that came with that leadership journey, that there is one very powerful message that I will leave you with. It is something that I have learnt that I need to overcome for my organisation to keep moving forward on an ongoing basis. And that is that all bottlenecks are at the top 
And often, when I look at my own organization, the one person that is holding back the progress to even greater magnificence is often me, the leader. And it's critical that I am always aware of that.